So we currently have these three time trials on offer in uh, Gran Turismo 7 and I think the most interesting one is the time trial related to the movie not only because it's related to the movie but also it's uh, open for another 43 days as you can see I've already set a time which is good enough for gold but the same time I can also see that the, the top times are being improved still and will probably uh, keep on improving in the next 43 days so I think it's best to try and improve my my own time the way I do uh, do this is usually by checking uh, one of the top times in the leaderboard in this th in this case I'm going to uh, check the time on P13 uh, simply because he is from the Netherlands as well so let's check it out start up the replay display all the options and I'm going for the bumper cam breaking points probably around the 100 board open up the corner by going to the left as much as possible stay on the curb with your right tires not get a track limit penalty the Red Bull Ring has four major braking points coming to the second one again around 100 really rotating the car get it straight lined as soon as possible so you can get on the power as soon as possible I'm really struggling with the, the second corner usually breaking before the shadow on the overpass back to second into third little oversteer but nothing too crazy again widening up the, the corner by going to the right as much as possible Staying within the track limits again by keeping the left tires on the curb. Staying really close to the curb, getting on the power back. Last major braking zone. Starts braking just before the steward's house on the left. Goes back to second for the final corner. Okay, that's good to know. And that's it for a lap around the Red Bull Ring. Let's see if we can put it on slow motion for some of the corners to get into a little bit more detail. So I think he starts braking just before the 100 board. Let's see if the braking inputs there. Yeah, so it's really on the 100 board. As you can see, there's a tiny, tiny bit of brake input coming in. So that's good to know. That's like um, probably, yeah, the most effective way to do this corner. But if you're unsafe, if you're going to make the corner by breaking at this exact point, you can also back it up a little bit and start... Um, yeah, pushing the brake marker each lap, building it up as you go. Um, and I think it's also important to note that he's really opening up the corner. I think you can see it better on this camera. He's really opening up the corner by going to the curb, or going to the left as much as possible, but just staying within track limits. Usually the AstroTurf is somewhere you don't want to go, but in this case I think the left tires are on the tarmac to the left of the AstroTurf. So if you're going to do this, then make sure you're uh, not on the green stuff, because, because that usually uh, unstables the car. Okay. Going forward. He throws the car over the yellow sausage curb. In, uh, in the first corner going through it in slow motion so he's really throwing the car over this curb 
And usually with GT cars, that's possible with like a Formula One car. This is not possible because those are way too stiff. But uh, with these kind of cars, it is possible. And you can see the right tires are to the right of this curb. So if you can nail it like this, then probably you'll gain the most time coming out of the first corner. Um, but again, you can build it up. So if you're not sure if you can do it like this, then keep your uh, right tires to the right or, or to the left of this curb and you'll uh, be okay. But that'll probably cost you some time. Going forward again. So he's coming up to the next major braking point for the Red Bull Ring which is again probably around the 100 board or just before it. Let's see where the brake put input is coming. Yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of brake input coming just before the 100 board. So it's exactly the same as for the first corner. And again, if I speed this up in step by step, you can see really opening up the corner by going to the left as much as possible and this is um, yeah probably the most again the most effective way to do this corner i struggle with this corner a lot and that's also because it's really really tight so it it narrows uh, it feels like it's going more narrow uh, when you hit the apex um, and you can see this time and that's that's a important thing to note he's not throwing the car over this sausage curb because uh, if you go over this sausage curb at this turn or this corner the car will unsettle so that's probably why he's also avoiding it and he straight lines the car as yeah, as quick as possible. So it's almost like a, a 90 degree steering am angle for a short uh, uh, period of time. And as you can see, he is already almost in a straight line to exit out of the corner. And then the third corner, the third big braking zone. He starts braking just before the shadow of the board. And so if you go back a little bit, rerun this, you can see the brake input is coming in again. Probably just after the 150 or halfway between, let's say, 125 meters. Maybe a little bit more close to the 100 board. Yeah, it's a little bit closer. Here you can see there's a little bit of brake input coming. So let's say 110 meters, he starts braking. Again, widening the corner by going to the left. This is an off-camber corner, so he stays close to the apex and accelerates out. Then into the final sector, again, widening up the corner by going to the right, staying close to the left-hand side of the track. Starts braking just after the end of the curve. And, yeah, and this part's all about flow, so... then this is the last major braking point for of course the end of the lap um, usually it's just before this steward's house so let's see where the brake input starts coming in yeah as you can see the brake inputs coming in just before this fence so just before this, uh, yeah, Stewart's house fence starts, he starts braking and again going to the left as much as possible because it's a right hand side corner. And this way he opens up the corner 
allowing him to get a, a good exit and also carry more speed through the corner, which we'll see here. This lines him up for this part. And for the ultimate corner, it's again important to know to stay with your right hand tires on this side of the curb. So don't go over the left side with your right hand side tires because that will result in a penalty and make the lap invalid. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, he's going to second for this corner. It's a short shift back up the third. Same track limits apply for uh, the exit of the corner. And that completes uh, the lap. Yeah, I did it like this because I'm not, I'm way slower than uh, than the top leaders, uh, the top leaderboard time. So, but I do wanted to inform you with uh, some information on how to uh, do a good lap time on the Red Bull ring. And well, my own example wouldn't probably be uh, sufficient because I'm just too slow. I'm hoping to get there at some point, but uh, I'm, I'm too slow for now. So I used one of the top 10 times or one of the top times in the leaderboard as a reference. I'm going into as much detail as possible and I hope you liked it. And um, yeah, make sure to leave a comment if you like this format and if you want me to do it in the future even more, because then I'll uh, do it for other time trials as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. And um, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.